Hey everybody, it's Dinosaur George from DinosaurGeorge.com. Okay, Thiago from uh, uh, Parnamirum, Brazil, Parnamirum, or Parnamirium? Huh, I don't know how to pronounce it, but uh, uh, let me know, Thiago, if I pronounced that correctly or not. Uh, he says, hey George, first I want to congratulate you for your work, for your website, that is very attractive. Thank you so much, I'm glad you like it, man. My question is, um, how do they classify T-Rex? Uh, by order, suborder, family, all that stuff. Um, that's a good question. Basically what we do is we take uh, all dinosaurs and we look at all of their skeletal features and we put them within groupings for each feature. So we start off with Tyrannosaurus rex. Well, clearly he's a member of the Tyrannosaur family, so that puts him in one category. Uh, he's a theropod. That adds him to another category. Uh, he's a uh, Sauriscian, so we add him to another category. Basically, it's like your family tree. We look at you and we, we look at your first name and that puts you into a group. Uh, we look at who your parents were, that puts you into another group. We look at who their parents were, that puts them into another group. Then we look at your skeletal design, that puts you into the grouping of humans, uh, and so on and so forth. So when you look at these dinosaurs and you see all these orders, suborders, class, that's nothing more than breaking down into finer and finer detail which family it belongs to. And all dinosaurs are put into that same way. Okay, um, Harry from Is Ipswich, England. In a fight, who would most likely win, Tyrannosaurus rex or Triceratops? Man, Harry, that's the classic battle. Uh, we have evidence that shows that a T-Rex uh, was not always the winner because we show some really devastating injuries. And then we show evidence that says Triceratops was not only always the winner. I think this fight is solely based on the age of each uh, uh, fighter and uh, who gets in the first blow. If T-Rex is able to get around and grab him behind that frill and inflict a deep injury, then that's pretty much it. He can stand back and watch the Triceratops slowly die of blood loss. But if Triceratops lands a blow with one of those massive brow horns, T-Rex is out of it. I don't think these fights ever lasted long between these two dinosaurs. I think they would look at each other from a distance and probably decide very quickly on whether it's even worth the battle. T Triceratops could turn and run, and he can outrun T-Rex in a long race. Uh, T-Rex may look at him and go, man, it ain't worth it. I'm going to go find something easier to kill. So I think it's kind of a toss-up with these guys. Okay, uh, Mohammed from Tiger, Oregon says, hey, DG, good luck with your new Discovery Channel and National Geographic shows. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, what he's talking about is I'm pitching a couple of new shows to these guys. Uh, uh, he said, currently it's Ramadan, and I fasted for one whole day. Uh, that's cool. Um, you know what? I, I, uh, I've never fasted before. I don't know how that is, but I'm very, um, I'm very proud of you for doing that, especially for, for doing it and celebrating Ramadan. Okay, he says, I know pterosaurs are not dinosaurs, but they're cousins. Uh, he said, um, and since birds are living dinosaurs, would that make pterosaurs and birds sister species? Very, very good question. But the answer is actually no, they're not. Just because they both fly doesn't really make them very closely related. Pterosaurs are not related very closely at all to birds, if at all. It's kind of like bats and birds. They both fly, but they don't really have any relationship to one another um, because uh, bir uh, bats are flying mammals. So um, it's kind of the same thing. So even though they're both flying, they're not related to birds. Now, birds are absolutely related to predatory dinosaurs, but, uh, but pterosaurs are kind of their own critter. Okay, Charleston from Subang, Jaya, Malaysia. I heard that despite T-Rex's arms are puny, they're actually very strong. So what I want to know is how strong were the arms and what were their functions? He says, I like Jurassic Fight Club and hope you'll make a new season. Charleston, I wish we would make a second season of Jurassic Fight Club because I enjoy doing it a lot, but I'm not really sure we will. But let's get to your question about those puny arms, and they were puny compared to body size. When you look at those arms, they're absolutely tiny, and so the first reaction is they weren't being used for anything. But then you look at the muscle attachments on them and you see how big the muscles were. That tells us, listen, those things were packed in muscle. I've seen estimates that suggest they may have been able to lift almost 300 pounds with each arm. That's huge. So then the question becomes, okay, so what were they using them for? My best guess 
is that they were using the arms as a way to stabilize their prey as they bit into it. In other words, they kind of positioned the prey so that they would able to be, get a, be able to get a bite into a vital area like the back of the neck. Um, they may have also used them uh, during reproduction to kind of uh, manipulate their mate so they could reproduce. That's another uh, possibility. Finally, Dr. Robert Bacher proposed a brilliant idea. He one time said that uh, he thinks that they may have been used for grooming. In other words, stepping up to your mate and gently scratching them and rubbing them, uh, that's sort of a way to bond a family. When you look at uh, humans, uh, we hold hands, we put our arms around people that are sad, uh, we shake hands. Those are all signs that sort of bond us together. Uh, and so animals do the same thing. Look at chimpanzees, look at the gorillas. They often groom each other. Now they're obviously, it looks like all they're doing is picking bugs out of the other one, but that's not the case. They're actually grooming and forming a family bond. Uh, so it could be possible that those hands were also being used to groom uh, family members. It's a really cool idea. Okay, Yale from Waterford, Michigan wants to know, how many dinosaurs and other ancient animals have I found? Me, have, have I found? Yale, um, I have probably found parts and pieces of thousands of individual animals, but I've never found a complete dinosaur. It's much more rare than you might, uh, might believe. But I found, uh, I've found a lot of fossils in my life, thousands, tens, maybe, maybe 100,000 pieces and parts and individual fossils. Uh, Joshua from Oxford, North Carolina says, Hi, Dinosaur George. My question today is about Megalania. I love Megalania. That's a giant Komodo-like dragon from Australia. Megalania is definitely a big dude. You're right. The two dinosaurs I'm going to ask about, um, or the two questions I'm going to ask about are, how big do you think Megalania was, since very few skeletons have ever been found? And do you think Megalania was the ultimate reptilian predator? Um, Joshua, those are good questions. How big do I think he is? The biggest estimate I've ever seen, and the one that I think is probably accurate, is about 35 feet long. Uh, there's not been a whole lot of them found, so you're right. Nobody really knows for certain how big these animals can grow. But I think they may have been able to grow about 35 feet. And yes, Megalania, in my opinion, was the ultimate reptilian predator, the true reptile predator. Uh, I think he was even more dangerous than the giant crocodile Dinosuchus. I think he was more dangerous than the giant crocodile Phobosuchus. Uh, I think he was the biggest, baddest reptile walking around with typical reptile legs than anything else on Earth. Uh, there were some dinosaurs that were more dangerous, but I'm talking about true, absolute reptiles. Nothing was more vicious, in my opinion, than Megalania. Okay, uh, Nadav from Tel Aviv, Israel says, I know this is not really a paleontology question, but, how, but do you know how gender evolved? Well, that is sort of a paleontology question, Nadav, and that's a good question. I don't know how gender ultimately came to be. I mean, obviously, it's a vital part of how animals are able to reproduce. Reproducing yourself, like the way uh, uh, bacteria can, where they can replicate themselves, that's actually incredibly strainful and takes a tremendous amount of energy, but it also makes you stay a very primitive organism. To reproduce with a member of your own family and to produce offspring means that that is a much more strong and stable way to produce because then you're sharing genes from both mates and you're making it a stronger animal. My best guess is that it, uh, it simply was necessary, but I don't understand the whole process. Okay, well listen, that's it. Uh, I hope you guys learned something new. I enjoy hearing from you. If you've got a question and you want to send it to me, go to DinosaurGeorge.com, click on the Ask Dinosaur George page, and I'll answer you as quickly as I can. But keep in mind, I get thousands of emails every month, and it's just impossible to answer them all. All right, until next time, take care of yourself, take care of the others around you, and for you young people, you make sure to practice your manners and practice your reading, and I will see you all again soon. Take care, everybody.